Hello and welcome back to Our Sustainable Journey. I'm Steve. And today we are going to see the results of the worm chow stuff. I'll show you that. Um, and I wanted to show you what we got today. So these, this is 100 buckets. Uh, these are 14 um, garbage cans. And you're like, why does anyone need 14 garbage cans? Well, because these are the ones that we use for food scraps for businesses. So we got a bunch more business clients. And so we needed um, enough garbage cans um, for each of those facilities. So it's a 50 gallon can, they fill it up. Some of them are weekly, some of them are bi-weekly. Um, but we added a bunch this week. So I had to get more cans. So we need to get those all labeled up with the OSJ logo and whatnot. And then we've had a lot more customers. I think today's swaps was 60 households. Um, so that's why it's almost nighttime when I finally got around to doing this stuff. Um, so we'll get, again, we'll get labels on those and uh, get those ready to go for the customers for next week. And then those, we got those a couple weeks ago. I don't remember if I showed you guys those. Those are the um, chicken transport crates that our butcher requires that we use. So these are fantastic for transporting chickens. So I will show you. They open super easy. Um, and you can use them to move the chickens around the farm and then you can just hose them off. That's why they're outside because who really cares? They're just they're just getting wet, but we'll put them in in the winter time. Um, but they're super durable and we needed them because our the, the chicken processor, we don't process on farm because we sell off a farm. And here in the state of Illinois, um, you can only sell meat you process on farm so if we process it, we could sell it on the farm, um, but you need to have an exemption form with the USDA um, or the Illinois Department of Ag, one of the two. There's an exemption form for, for on farm, but we don't really sell anything on farm um, because I don't want people coming to the farm because we got too much going on and I don't have time for <laughs> tours and whatnot, <laughs> um, really. But there's just, there's just a lot of moving parts and so it's really tough to um, coordinate having people out here so we don't have people come out to the farm and the same thing with like our eggs we don't sell them on farm we could sell them on farm but we just don't um, we sell all that stuff off farm so anyway on to the worm chow um, and then I will show you one last thing at the end that's kind of exciting <music> All right, let's check on the feeding the worms experiment. So, I put plastic over it to kind of keep the moisture in. And that's gonna pull away some of the newspaper that was on top, but we have. Okay, so about here, this was worm chow. This was chicken food. This was food scraps and um, shredded paper and cardboard. And then this was cow manure over in that area. So we'll start with the worm chow. And it looks like it's all gone. So what I'm gonna do. All right, so can we see any, I can't even see any worms. They've probably moved on. They're like, all right, we ate all the worm chow. We're going to move on to the next one. There's a sticker in there for an old bin. All right, so chicken food, you can actually see there's a lot left. So they didn't seem to like that as much, um, which is fine by me because the chickens love it. Um, but it's got good stuff for them. So... 
We'll mix it all back in there. We'll get to it eventually. That's interesting. I figured they would chow down on this stuff, but not so much. Okay. Food scraps. Oh, this is going to be a little bit harder. Okay. There's a bunch of worms on top of the newspapers. So, there's a little bit left. Um, nothing, I mean, eggshells are identifiable, but nothing else that's really, maybe whatever that is, maybe asparagus? I can't really tell at this point. Um, there's worms chowing down. Oh, they found a, I think that's a banana peel. That was a banana peel. There's not much left of it. So all that's left is the cardboard, but you can see um, worms there, there. They're getting to it, so that's why we like the food scraps and cardboard, because that works really well. Because um, it's all gone. Alright, and now, let me flip things back the other way. The plastic here. <clears throat> And we've got the cow manure. And this is... Alright. So, what's left, what you're seeing is the straw or hay that got mixed in with the food. Um, our cows like to pull it out and go for the good stuff. So, the actual manure itself is pretty much gone it's just these clumps of hay oh, there's worms chowing on it right now um so i don't think this one did bad this one's going to take a lot longer to break down because of the 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 hay that's in there it's very fibrous material um and so this is probably be better off uh, because of the way it is if it were just straight up cow manure would be awesome because you could tell they they basically ate all the manure out from between the hay Because um, this is all just hay. There's really not a whole lot of manure in here Maybe a little bit over here in this giant clump, but um, they ate All the manure out all the all the stuff they like So he's laying an egg um, So there you have it Bottom line, worm chow worked out really well. Food scraps and cardboard work really well. And manure, straight manure, no additives, I guess. Um, so if you have access to straight manure, by all means, put it in your bins. Um, it seems to work really well. Other manures are great. Um, we've had alpaca. Um, rabbit is another good one that a lot of people do. I would love to add rabbits to the farm. We just have so many animals going on right now that it's, it's tough to find the time to add one more. Um, so, so yeah, now you can see why I like the food scraps and cardboard. Um, it's a nice balanced diet for them and it helps keep stuff out of landfills. Um, cow manure is not ending up in landfills. It's ending up in gardens or on farmer's fields. Um, the worm chow is basically purchased stuff that isn't necessary um, and so that's why I'm not really a big fan of it because I like to be able to eliminate a waste instead of creating more waste by buying stuff that you don't need to buy you can do food scraps um, so yeah so that's what we've got going on now I want to show you what we're planning for next time So my food scrap customers are always asking about what's allowed and what's not allowed. Because there's certain things that are kind of weird. Um, and this is one of them. So this is a, it says compostable at a, a commercially compostable only. Um, basically, usually what that means is it needs to heat up to a certain temperature. And that's the only way it's going to break down. But if you look at it, 
This is kind of a fibrous material on the bottom here. This feels like plastic, this ring. And then the top feels like a thickish cardboard. Um, and then there's coffee grounds inside. So obviously the coffee grounds will um, break down very easily. What'll happen is the worms will crawl into this little hole and chow down on those and then slowly devour the rest of it. Um, but I'm kind of curious on how long that will take. So I'm going to build a little bin. That's what we listen to all day long. Um, I'm going to build a little bin specifically for just this item. Um, I might, I have somebody giving me some compostable paper plates um, in the next couple of days. So we'll try, maybe we'll try a bunch of um, commercially compostable stuff, see how the worms do with it, see how long it takes to break down. Uh, but that's kind of the next thing on my plate. So stay tuned for more on that. And on the subject of experiments with worms, one thing I'm gonna be setting up in the next couple of weeks, um, I'll post a video, don't worry, is a worm breeding area out here in the barn. Um, I've been disappointed with what's out in the market and so we're gonna start selling worms because we have plenty. They're, they're breeding really well. Um, and our population is growing faster than we need them. So we'll sell the access, we'll start breeding some of our own. Um, so I've been really happy with the results of some of the, the breeding bins that, that you all have seen um, that we set up. So we're gonna do stuff like that. I'll, I'll post a link to the website if you wanted to buy worms um, for your own so that you can do fun experiments with them like we do. And because I know you wanted an update on the chicks. Here they are. So <clears throat> they were very tiny last time around. They've probably doubled in size already. We finally got the good heating mats, but they got so used to those, they, they prefer the lamps still. And what we did was we cut it in half the brooder. So I just put up a, a quick wall. Um, so probably in the next couple of days, we'll, we'll take the wall out so that they can spread out over the whole thing. And then I can move the water as we move both waters over here and the feeders over here and stuff. Um, and it's working really well the way we have it set up. So I may leave it this way and then we can always do another batch over there. Um, cause I have more coming in two weeks. We have some Olive eggers coming. Um, and then we're supposed to be getting some from, so around here, <clears throat> in school, they actually hatch chicks um, as part of, I don't know, science class or something. Um, and then they need someone to take all those chicks. And we volunteered. So I don't know how many we're getting. I don't know how many schools. There's only a couple schools in the area, so it can't be that many. Um, but those should be coming at some point. We're not sure how many are going to hatch even, um, from them. So we shall see how many more chicks we have in the next month or so. But here they all are just chilling. They basically just relax, eat, drink, and poop. That's the life. So there you go. hundred and... 80, 200 baby chicks, somewhere in there. Just chilling. Okay, so you saw in the beginning how we got new cans. Um, and I wanna show you another thing besides all of the food scrap customers, another reason we needed them is because we got a sawmill and they are giving us sawdust, unlimited sawdust. Um, which is a great brown for composting, um, good for the worm farm as well. So we can use this instead of cardboard or um, any of the other materials that we use as browns in there, the straw that was in with the manure and stuff. So sawdust. So this is 50. So we got one, two, three. We got three of them. So 150 gallons of sawdust. Um, and they basically said anytime we want to go back 
we can pick up more. Um, but you just, this is the best stuff and it's all perfect. So if you have a big worm farm, find a sawmill near you. Um, they're probably more than happy to give it to you, um, just to get it off their premises. So, cause he was, he was, um, planning on burning it, um, cause he just had so much. So we said, we will take whatever you can give us. So that's kind of cool. So we're going to start adding that into the worm farm. And then when we have the breeding bins, we'll set those up in the next couple of weeks. Um, we'll use this as one of the, the browns that we add to those. So. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you all next time. Take care. Oh my God, I am not petting you, dude. What did you do? They broke their house. It's a problem with the dog that weighs a hundred pounds. Hi. Hello. Hello. Say hi to the people. Yeah. yeah I guess I, they were playing on it. And they like to push on it. Hi, buddy. Hi. hi. Oh, you are so gross. Oh, rain and dogs. Awesome. But I bet the next time we see them, they'll be like sparkling white. It's kind of cool. Lovely.